Chapter 3, A Collective Prayer Experience Although I was being transported as any ordinary injured person would be, I saw a comforting picture unfolding before me. Leaning on a staff made of some kind of luminous substance, Clarencio stopped in front of an enormous door carved into a great wall that was covered with graceful and flowery vines. When he touched a certain spot on the wall, a wide breach opened up through which we silently entered. A mellow light bathed everything. In the distance, a graceful focus of light seemed to suggest a sunset on a spring evening. As we proceeded, I could make out charming buildings arrayed along extensive gardens. At a nod from Clarencio, my bearers slowly laid down my improvised stretcher. Next, I saw the welcoming door of a white building that looked like a large hospital. At my benefactor's call, two young men, dressed in snow-white linen tunics, ran eagerly to my stretcher as they laid me on an emergency gurney in order to carefully carry me inside. I heard the kind old man recommend, Put our ward in the pavilion on the right. I have another commitment waiting for me now, but early tomorrow I'll return to see him. I gave him a look of gratitude as I was led to a comfortable, richly furnished and spacious room where I was offered a welcome bed. Enveloping my two assistants in the aura of my thankfulness, I made an effort to talk to them and finally managed to ask, Friends, whoever you might be, could you tell me what new world this is? What sun does this bright and comforting light come from? One of them stroked my brow as if he had personally known me for a long time and explained, We are in the spiritual spheres close to the earth and the sun that is shining on us at this moment is the same one that used to warm our physical bodies. Here, however, our visual perception is much richer. The sun that the Lord lit for our earthly endeavors is actually more precious and beautiful than we ever imagined when we were in the corporeal realm. Our sun is the divine matrix of life, and its brightness comes from the author of creation. As though myself had been absorbed in a wave of infinite respect, I gazed at the soft light entering the room through its windows, and I lost myself in deep reflection. I recalled that I had never even looked up at the sun during my days on earth, and I meditated on the immeasurable goodness of the one who had given it to us to shine on the eternal path of life. I was like a fortunate blind man whose eyes are open to the sublimity of nature after having lived for long centuries in darkness. Next, they served me a stimulating soup, followed by highly refreshing water that seemed infused with divine fluids. The small portion of liquid revived me unexpectedly. I couldn't tell what type of soup it was, if it was a sedative or a salutary medicine. New energies flooded my soul and profound emotions vibrated in my spirit. My greatest thrill, however, had been reserved for the moments that followed. I had scarcely gotten over my consoling surprise when a divine melody wafted into the room, sounding like a soft beehive of sounds coming down from the higher spheres. Those musical notes of marvelous harmony went straight to my heart. The attendant at my side noticed my inquiring look and explained, The twilight hour has come to Nasalar. In every center of this service colony dedicated to Christ, there is a direct link to the prayers of the government center. And while the music anointed the surroundings, he took his leave and said, Be at peace now. I'll return right after prayer. I was suddenly filled with anxiety. May I go with you, I pleaded. You're still weak, he gently explained, but if you feel disposed to come along... The music had renewed my deepest energies. Overcoming any difficulties, I rose from the bed and took hold of the fraternal arm that was offered to me. Walking with faltering steps, I came to an enormous hall where a large assembly was meditating in deep silence. 
from the bright ceiling hung delicate garlands of flowers that extended down to the floor, forming radiating symbols of high spirituality. No one seemed to notice my presence, even though I could hardly contain my overwhelming awe. Everyone looked as if they were waiting for something. Working to hold back the many questions boiling in my mind, I noticed that in the background a remarkable picture of wonderful, almost flaring light was being drawn on a giant screen. By some kind of advanced televisory process, a marvelous temple scenario appeared. Seated on a dais was an old man crowned with light and robed in a white tunic of shining scintillations, gazing aloft in an attitude of prayer. On a lower level, 72 figures accompanied him in respectful silence. I was greatly surprised to notice that Clarencio was among those gathered around the shining old man that he was taking part in the assembly. I pulled at my attendant's arm, and knowing that my questions couldn't wait till later, he explained in a low voice that sounded more like a light breeze, Be still. All the inhabitants and institutions of Nasalar are praying with the governor via the long-distance projection of sight and sound. Let us praise the invisible heart of heaven. He had scarcely finished his explanation when the seventy-two figures began singing in harmonious, indescribably beautiful hymn. While Clarencio was within the circle of the venerable companions, his countenance seemed to shine with an intense light. The celestial canticle was composed of angelic notes of sublime gratitude. Mysterious vibrations of peace and joy floated all around, and as the silvery notes sounded a delightful staccato, a wonderful blue heart with golden rays became visible above us in the distance on a higher level. The prayers were then answered by caressing music coming perhaps from distant spheres. Then a heavy rain of blue flowers began falling on us, Although we could see those tiny celestial flowers, we couldn't grasp them with our hands, and when they touched our heads, they just melted away. I experienced an extraordinary renewal of energy upon contact with the fluidic petals, as if some kind of soothing balm was being applied to my heart. As soon as the sublime prayer service was over, I was helped back to my quarters by my friend, who had been standing close by. However, I was no longer the seriously ill patient of a few hours ago. My collective prayer experience in Nasolar had worked to complete transformation. An unexpected comfort filled my soul. For the first time after so many years of suffering, my poor, longing, and tormented heart, like a chalice that had remained empty for so long, was once again filled with the generous drops of the liquor of hope.